Hey, what's up guys? Tuki here, back again with another episode of a Nation United Finland edition with the Espo Eagles. And today, what is old is new again, at least in the case of a couple of faces that returned to the team in the last episode. And the hope is that we have the perfect combination of the different eras of the team that we've seen thus far. I mean, Lambert, Ludman, and Louie have been here for a while. You look at guys like Jokinen, Kapanen, and Jokola, who have joined the team last year, and on defense, the re-addition, you know, re-adding Hikola and Ristolainen, and now the goaltending situation where, my god, if one of these two can't lead us to a cup, then how will we ever get there? We are in the final stages of this series, as I've talked about. There's really only going to be a handful of episodes left, I would imagine. We're talking two seasons, three seasons at most. I mean, obviously, a lot of it depends on how quickly... Uh, what, well, number one, whether or not we even get to the postseason, which you'd like to think is a given with this roster, but it's not. We've seen better teams than this fail. But whether or not we get to the playoffs, how deep into the playoffs we go, a lot of it too, of course, depends on me getting some editing done, of course, that I want to get done. And I've talked about that before. A lot of people like your roster editing in July. I am, and then that way, when NHL 20 comes out, I know exactly what changes I want to make. I don't have to sit there and essentially do the research. I just know, okay, I'm changing Austin Matthews to a 90, depending on what he is. I'm changing this guy to that, this potential to this. And in that way, it really won't take too much time. Uh, because the one thing I did roster editing wise with NHL 19 was I waited until they released an update in November that finally added a bunch of missing AHL guys. I don't want to do that again, though. I really don't want to have to wait two months for them to get the rights to add in certain guys who take the leap from the AHL or from junior to the AHL. So I'll be editing right out of the gates. So for me, it's about getting the editing done. Of course, for me, it makes it a hell of a lot more interesting as well. And with the editing, you can't exactly half-ass it because if you don't make changes, certain teams will have over 50 contracts and they might drop prospects or might not resign people or they might drop players that they shouldn't drop. So it's one of those things that you have to do it the right way. So I'm making sure I get that done. Of course, yes, there will be a video uh, talking about like, okay, here's my final roster. Of course, all the changes are on the near 200 page editing doc at this point. I highly recommend just going by the change log at the very bottom, of course, at this point. But yeah, I want the final series for NHL 19, I mean, you know, to be with accurate rosters, or at least starting accurate rosters. I'm not sure, again, what the series will be. More than likely, uh, they are going to be similar to the structure I have now, where I balance two different franchise modes on alternate days. One is a more straightforward, like the Hurricane series, and another is like this one. Of course, this was the Nations United idea. Whether or not we go back to Draft to Glory, whether or not we... I mean, I don't think we'll run Nations United again, probably. We'll probably wait a little bit. But there, there are a couple of other ideas I've bounced around as well. So, I mean, we'll see... We'll see what's, uh, you know, coming up as we... Head down the home stretch of NHL 19 and heading into NHL 20. So yeah, I'm I'm intrigued to see how things go for the channel over the next few months and in the short term. I'm intrigued to see what happens with the rest of this series. And so far, we're off to a decent start, but the regular season at this point almost means nothing. That doesn't mean nothing because, of course, it is going to determine seeding, and you could argue maybe with some slightly different matchups in the postseason, we could have seen a Stanley Cup banner being raised already, but that is what it's all about. We want a Stanley Cup. <laughs> that's, that's what we are so desperate for. I've talked about it before. The real hit or miss track record with the either Nations United or a Nation United concept. I'm desperate for a win here. Whether it had been the U.S. series from last year, which had similar struggles from what I remember, whether it be the original you know, OG Nation United series, which I think was NHL 16 or 17. It's weird that I've been on YouTube doing this for long enough now that I can, I, I mean, I kind of struggle to remember what series was on which game 
aside from like the OG Bruin series and the OG Canuck series on NHL 16 or whatever, which God, that was <laughs> that was four years ago almost. Jesus, where's the time going? Man, we'll have to run back a Canuck series one of these days, too. I know people really want me to do that, but that original Canuck series is still near and dear to my heart. Uh, what we're going to do here is, I think we'll send to January 1st where I set it. We'll double-check what the lines are looking like, unless we continue to lose games hand over fist, which we're not exactly in the best run of form right now, but at least as of late, we've been losing some games in overtime. If we lose to Anaheim here, I'm stopping it, so of course we win. But hopefully we can get to January 1st. With a half-decent record, we'll take a look at the team and see what changes could possibly be made. Of course, the interesting point here, of course, with two high-value goaltenders is that we could make a move on the offensive or defensive side of things if we needed to. You'd like to think the offensive side of things would be fine. We might have to shuffle around the pieces, but I think in terms of this team being back towards a competitive state, we've gotten there a hell of a lot sooner than I thought we would once we blew it up. I think we... You know, managed to get pretty lucky with some of the guys that we had acquired once we blew it up originally. Now, we do get to January 1st. We have 19 wins on the year. I was hoping for an even 20. But 19, 13, and 5. The Helsinki Hawks are at 8-8 eight and eight at one point. They're up to 21, 11, and 5. So they're looking pretty good. But we are not currently in a playoff spot, which to me is an outright disaster. I mean, we're eight points back of New Jersey. For this team to not be in a playoff spot right now is simply unacceptable. Goaltending-wise, oh my god. So, Hakarainen's been terrible. Loxo has been good, but not great. Defensively, Hikala has 16 points and is a plus 16. Risto has 19 points and is a plus 17. 15 points for Matty Vertanen and a plus 3. 13 points for Kervine and a plus 1. That third pairing has been a nightmare. Unfortunately, with Ramo and Noka Linen. Kari Ramo's actually, I mean, he still just does a depth forward. Now, here's the thing, and actually, I forgot to talk about this at the start of the episode. I went through and signed a lot of the other free agents that were available. So, someone like Oli Mata. Forward wise, I signed Henrik Borgstrom. Just to make sure that we, you know, had players to fill out the roster with. And that way, if worse comes to worse, we have players that we can call up. So I did forget to mention that. But the reason why I wanted to bring it up is we have guys like Saren Haimo, Matty Kuka, and Posse Tirvinen who could be given an opportunity if need be. And unfortunately, it just doesn't look like Ramo is ready. And I wonder if Nokalainen's ready. Because, I mean, Nokalainen wasn't ready years ago. He still might not be ready now. I think, of course, it would have been pretty interesting for him to return and for him to do well, but it just hasn't happened. Basically, all of them, by the way, have been signed to one-year deals, where we paid them a little bit more money just to make sure that they signed. So I did forget to mention that at the top, but in all honesty, it's not that it's not that important. But I think we give Noka Linen one more chance to turn it around, but Ramo's going to go down to the minors. And as far as who we call up here, I'm a little bit worried that Posse Tirvinen, while he has 23 points, is a minus player. It's just kind of surprising. So I think we'll go with Matty Kuka, who's been having a decent season. And we'll see what he's capable of. And we'll make uh, you know changes from there. Of course, we still have to look at the forward core to see if there's anything that we have to turn around there. Yes, I know. Back to edit line. God damn it. I hate how it does that. Just let me change it. Unless I hit B, who cares? I'm still in the realm of editing the lines, but whatever. That is what it is. Yeah, Kervinen and Vertanen haven't been great. You know, I'm going to put Noka Linen with Vertanen. I'm going to put Kervinen with Kuka, and we'll see what happens there. Offensively, Essa Yokola has been phenomenal, which is what I was hoping for. Good stuff. He had 69 points last year, which of course is very nice. He is on pace for just about 100 points this year, which is great news. Brad Lambert, 48 points on the year. And Tommy Ludman, not bad, 46 points. That top line is clicking, even though Ludman's a sniper. Second line, Mika Jokinen, 28 points in 37 games. I will take that. 26 points for Samu Louie. And you have Kapanen at 25, so not too bad from the second line. 
Third line, we get Tommy Osplund. I mean, he's a minus 12, but he has 20 points, which is solid. 25 points for Billy Nornan, 16 points for Kiprasov. So defensively, they're terrible, but the offense is where you would want it. And then the fourth line, Pirnez, 14 points is great. Hamelainen just hasn't had it this year. And Vicola has been okay with the nine points, but he's still a minus player, which is kind of surprising. So it's the bottom six, while they're putting up points, from a defensive standpoint, it just hasn't been there. And I'm trying to decide here really on the fly what we want to do. Hamelainen had 25 points last year, but it just hasn't been there this year. And Vicola had 67 points in the NHL last year. His point total is solid for a fourth liner, but the plus minus just isn't there. Now, Henrik Borgstrom could get the call and very, very likely will. He was kind of my insurance policy. Now, I'm wondering, though, if the best way to go about it, say we drop Hamelin and Vicola, maybe change up what exactly the bottom six is. But I think, I don't even know if I necessarily want to drop those two outright. That'd probably be lost value. But forward-wise, say we go with Borgstrom, and then we have Koivula who's doing all right. Yerky Hakana has had a decent point total, but the plus minus is a little bit rough. Lamala is listed as a depth option, and Joachim Martens also still there. Uh, do we go with Lamala? I think we give Lamala a chance. We'll call up these two, swap them into fourth line roles, and go for it. See what happens from there. The only, uh, the only doubt <laughs> that you might have been able to detect there for me is just whether or not we break up that third line because the problem is I feel like we have to. Just defensively, it's, it's pretty bad. So it can really be any of them. Kiprasov might be the best guy to drop. So say we take out Hamelainen. <sighs> yeah, we'll drop, we'll drop Kiprasov. So say we take out Hamelainen, we'll bring in Henrik Borgström and Vicola. We'll take a seat for Lamala. And I think the best way to go about that is to drop Kipper and put Borgstrom onto a higher line. So I think we'll give that a go. Might not be the worst way to go about it, I would hope. And we'll play Piernez at center, Lamala on the left, Kipper's off on the right. So some slight changes to the team. We really do need to see a better standard in goal and hopefully now the bottom six is a little bit more competent. No real way to tell until we get back into the sim. Now the good thing is we have two months to try and figure out what this roster is going to be. We can make that trade if necessary using one of the two goaltenders. Although, again, when it comes to our options that are out there, there really aren't that many good ones. I mean, I know forward-wise... You know, you have your Patrick Lineage, your Capocacos, your Aturatis, but they're not really going to help. <laughs> like, we've seen them we've seen them struggle time and time again. And defensively, the only guy out there who's decent is Olya Levy. And unless something has changed in Arizona, they're not going to want to get rid of him as we continue this win-loss, win-loss uh, you know, run here that just isn't going to help us whatsoever. We need to break out of that. If we lose to if we lose to St. Louis here, I'm stopping the sim. We desperately need a win here against the Blues. They're not a good team, and if we lose, we are starting to risk our playoff hopes, and it's an overtime loss. All right, what is happening to the Eagles here? Because we're going to be relatively far out of the playoffs. We are currently 12 points back of Columbus and at least five points out of the playoffs. Technically, I mean, Eastern Conference, 55 points. So technically, we're only two points out of the eighth seed, but this team is better than struggling to be the eighth seed. At least I'd like to think. Loxo's done better. Hakarainen has not been able to cut it as the backup this year. And on that fourth line, four points, a minus one for Lamala, Pirnez, and Kiprasov's continuing to struggle. Borgstrom hasn't been overly good, but he hasn't been offensive. I mean, three points in ten games is fine for a third liner. I mean, it's more than fine, actually. 
I'm just worried about Kiprasov. From a defensive standpoint, the fourth line just continues to hemorrhage goals. And I suppose, I mean, I suppose somebody has to get scored on out of all of these lines, but that doesn't mean I'm happy about it. The problem is, what else can we really do? We'd be risking having to send some people down through waivers, but it, it's kind of disappointing that Kiprasov is one of the most disappointing guys right now. <laughs> I mean, he had 64 points last year. It was a plus five, but this year he just has not had it. Like, I know he doesn't have the power play time this year like he did last year, so I'm not too upset about the point total, you know, the, the pace being a little bit lower. But what the hell is up with the poor defense? Like I said, somebody has to be, you know, out of all the lines, somebody's got to be the one to give up goals. But, man, it, it shouldn't be it shouldn't be this bad. So I think we will call up Otto Koivula. We'll plug him into the fourth line. And we'll see if there is a change to be made. I think, yeah, we'll uh, we'll be sitting Kiprasov for the moment. Of course, we can have those three healthy scratches. And we'll see if that change to the fourth line is enough to uh, have a positive effect. If not then, I mean, we're going to have to look at trading away somebody. Don't know who that'll be. Not to say that the only reason we've been losing lately is because of the fourth line, but we'll make that slight change. We will try to get through at least the next two games without having to stop the sim again. That would be great. And we'll see what we can do. We lose again. I mean, it's the eighth pity point of the year, but damn. <laughs> Like, come on. We're better than this, aren't we? Like, please? Because we lose to Chicago as well. Jeez, so we're a month out from deadline day. And at this rate, we're closer to being you know, we're closer to being sellers than we are a playoff team. Which is just insane to me. We should be better than this. Yet here we are. Defensively, Kuka's been fine. Arguably inoffensive. Noka Linen, though, I'm, I'm not digging it from him. I'm not. And because of that, and because of all the other healthy scratches that we have, I think the best course of action here is to probably try and move on from Noka Linen and just recoup whatever we can if he has any trade value. If he doesn't have any trade value, we just ditch him. Uh, he has some. I don't know if that's uh, tradable, though, we'll say. Arizona, holy hell, do they only have 18 wins? Wow, Arizona's terrible. They are still listed as champions, or champion status, but they still don't want to trade Ole Levy, <laughs> which is pretty surprising. So, I mean, obviously I'm not going to send, uh, you know, I'm not going to send Nokalainen to Arizona. That would be a nightmare for me. Sending him to Buffalo might work if they actually had a pick that I could get back and return. I mean, we're only looking at like a low-end second. Calgary would have too many skaters. Anybody else? Minnesota? Third round pick? Nope, too many skaters. New Jersey would probably be a little bit over the cap. Let's see. Second round pick for Nokalainen? They'd have to put Steven Santini on waivers, so that is a no. Philadelphia is gonna be way over the cap. If they try to do this, yeah, they'd have to uh, immediately put Noka Linen on waivers. Okay, well, if you'd have to put Noka Linen on waivers, what about a third? Like, is there a deal here to be made where I at least get something and then you risk having to put him through waivers? Apparently not. Apparently not. However, there's really nowhere else where we could look to do this deal. So, Noka Linen, we're just going to have to risk for nothing, which is fine by me. If he clears, cool, he might get another opportunity, but for now, he needs to be dropped. So, Kuka is safe, surprisingly. We're looking at either Saren Haimo, Tiervainen, or Oli Mata. Now, Saren Haimo, 16 points and an even rating. Tiervainen with 28 points, but a minus 5, and Oli Mata has been okay. We're going to go with Saren Haimo for now. Nokalainen did end up clearing waivers, which I, I don't know... 
Don't know if that's a very sparkling review for one Petri Nokalainen at this point. Let's go ahead and get Saren Haimo in as a defensive D-man. He being with Vertanen isn't the worst way to go. Offensively, I mean, Koivula's only had the two games. So we'll have to give that a little bit more time. Although, that third line, I mean... I don't like, my god, Osplund being a minus player too sucks. Like, sure, it's nice that you're putting up points, but when you're also getting scored on as much, it's like, it is, you know, what, what's even the point? <laughs> if you're going to get scored on that much, it's more of a detriment than anything. Let's bump up Mika Piernes and play Borgstrom at center. And we'll see what that does. I mean, still having issues in the bottom six. Goaltending-wise, we might have to try and pull off another trade with Arizona here. Maybe their, their strategy changes over the next few weeks. And maybe somehow, some way, we can get Olia Levy at a slight discount. Because obviously we're having issues with at least one defenseman. And getting your Levy back might be the way to go. The reason for trading him, of course, at the time was, yeah, it was a little bit rough. But also, okay, let's recoup, get these low elite guys, these medium top four guys. Unfortunately, the two low elite defensemen that we picked up, they they couldn't cut it. They weren't any better. So that was the big problem there. The continued lack of development for generated defensemen in the series is arguably what has killed our hopes of winning a Stanley Cup. Because if you think about it, I mean, Thomas Hikola is the most successful computer-generated player that we have seen in this series, which is absolutely ridiculous to me. <laughs> absolutely ridiculous, but he has by far been the most successful. Now, the good thing is we've, uh, we've picked up our winning form here in the past few minutes, and hopefully that can continue... If it does, then we're going to be in a much better spot here as we move closer to the playoffs and hopefully as we move closer to getting into, I mean, true contention, I think is the best way to view it. Chris Tierney, you are not finished. It's funny how you ended up back in San Jose, though. Was Eric Carlson a part of that deal? I do wonder. As we have a nice little winning streak going here. I don't want to jinx it, but only one loss this calendar month thus far. That was to the Leafs back on the 6th. We beat Vancouver as well. We have two more games before the deadline. Win them both. And our playoff hopes look a hell of a lot better here. Just shy of deadline day. Can we beat Anaheim? How long is it going to take to sim? You decide. 4 to nothing win over the Ducks. A pleasant surprise, and one game left before the deadline. That is against the Bruins. Let's see what we can do. It is going to be, I mean, it's the final game of the month. It is a win. One loss in the month of February. We are up to 36, 19, and 8. And with that, the Eagles have stormed into a playoff spot. Absolutely tremendous. What a turnaround it has been. Now, we already know. Esa Yokola, he's leading this team in points. He has 83 points in 63 games. Brad Lambert's killing it. Tommy Ludman's killing it. Love what I'm seeing from that line. The second line, I mean, 40 points in 63 games for Mika Jokinen. Love it. He's going to finish with at least 50. Samuel Louis at 37 points. Meh. But eh, he's a plus 16. And then Marco Kapanen, how many points did he have last year? He had 56, he has 47 this year. So I'm feeling I'm feeling good about it because that line is also defensively responsible. So I, I really don't have too many complaints that Samu Louie might not quite hit the levels that you'd want a second line forward to hit. He's kind of gonna he's kinda gonna be in between of a second line guy and a third line guy. But uh, I'm good with it. I'm good with it. Tommy Asplund, 46 points. A minus five on the year. Does he have power play time? He does. That would explain that. Uh, you have Billy Norton, who's back to an even rating and is killing it. And Mika Pirnez has fit in very well on that third line. So I think we found a winning combination there. 
Fourth line, Quivula, eight points in 16 games, a plus nine. We have found a winning combination. There we go. The third line, just the bottom six in general, we finally found the right combination. Defensively, Sarenheimer, three points and a plus seven. That third pairing, Kervainen and Matty Kuka's a plus 13. This team caught fire. I think we have finally found the right combination. Uh, Hakarainen's been a little bit better. And Loxo up to that 925 save percentage. I'm feeling good. I mean, I didn't think we'd have to have Kippersoff, Pakola, and Hamelainen as healthy scratches, yet here we are. So with Vicola, we can probably risk trying to send you know, we could probably risk trying to send him down. We'll hold on to Kippersoff and Hamelainen. And we'll call up more than likely, or at least we will leave space to call up the best option that we can. Vicola was claimed by Calgary, so be it. I didn't even want to bother trying to trade him. It's fine. So defensively, odds are, I mean, if we're in trouble. It's going to be Ole Mata who gets the call-up, or Posse Tirvainen, who started to turn his season around. So we do have options in case something goes horribly wrong, but I would not be doing my due diligence if I didn't check with Arizona, as they're down to contenders, I think. They do not want to trade Ole Levy. Here's my question. Actually, they're still listed as champions. Can I get Ole Levy? I'm still going to try. I'll tell you why. Having Ole Levy as our healthy scratch defenseman, someone who can jump into this lineup if we start to falter, I mean, you, you just can't beat that. So if we can pick him up, we will absolutely jump at the opportunity to do so. Hell, I could use Kippersoft's value to try and help that go through. So, Hacker Ryan would be the guy to trade. His values dropped a little bit as of late. If I were to add anybody else into the deal, there would technically be too many players involved. But maybe I can simply use Hacker Ryan to pull this off. I'm still going to try to be overly ridiculous here. I don't remember if the trade difficulty is on easy or hard. I think I put it back to hard, which is fine. And we'll just test this out to see if we can somehow get this to work. We still have draft picks. Uh, I mean, neither of the first round pick is very high. So, I mean, granted, it doesn't help us out too much, but we don't have to worry about, like, oh, should I really trade this? Are there prospects? It's not really anything that we have to worry about right now. But say we also add Nermanen. I can't imagine we're that close. But... Like I said, still worth a shot. And then, for the hell of it, Kippersoff would probably provide cap issues. Or maybe not. But if I were to add... We actually need another defenseman more than we need a forward. Say we were to add it. We know Thomas Renanen is a Finn, so that's perfect. Would that go through? No, it wouldn't. I think that, yeah, it's just too much value. There's just too much value. If an extra first round pick can't get that to go through, then so be it. We stick with the team that we have. Yeah, he's just far too valuable. All right, our team is our team. We've had to mix and match some pieces, but we are on at the very least a 10 game winning streak that I assume will end immediately here against Washington. But as long as we keep up this pace, we are playoff bound. I'd like to think that's going to happen, and of course, as is uh, expected, we lose to Washington pretty much immediately, which again doesn't surprise me in the slightest. We ended up losing to Edmonton as well, but we bounced back with the win over the Kings and a win against the Minnesota Wild, approaching 40 wins now on the season. One hell of a turnaround. Like I said, I can't help but think we just we managed to find a winning combination with the Lions. We have other players that we can change in and change out if we have to, depending on how people do. Uh, and you want, we, might, we might as well take a look at the draft class. For the hell of it, can't really hurt. <laughs> Go figure. There is a Finn, and for once, he's in the SHL. That is the first Finn I have seen in Sweden all year, and it's the first or all series. And go figure, it's the one time where I'm not scouting Sweden. This game is cruel at times. 
That is the only way to put it. This game can be horrifically cruel. We are in second place now. We managed to jump New Jersey. I don't think we're going to catch the Islanders, although crazier things have happened. So, Cogliano, if you would please go over to Sweden to scout that top prospect, I would greatly appreciate it. At least that way we can have one guy there. We can figure out if that guy is worth targeting. I mean, I'd like to think we're not even going to have to worry about it, but that is solely dependent on this team's performance here in the next few weeks. We end up beating Detroit up to 42 wins on the season, a back-to-back -back against Dallas and Columbus. We lose to the Stars, but we beat the Blue Jackets. Another back-to-back, -back, San Jose and Winnipeg. It's our third or second of three straight back-to-backs. Unfortunately, we have lost three out of four games. We really need a win or two against Tampa and or St. Louis. We lost to the Blues. Did we lose to Tampa? We did not. So we're up to 44 wins, four games left on the season. I imagine we're back in third. We're further back than that. We are in fourth. We are in the seventh seed, the top wild card spot. It is a tough division. We haven't been as good as we've needed to be. And now the pressure's on a little bit, as is expected, because the pressure's always on at the end of a season. However, we have clinched a playoff spot. That is what's important, as the Leafs have yet to clinch, but they more than likely will. I doubt the Leafs, or I, yeah, I doubt the Leafs will be caught by Montreal. So more than likely, it's going to be Ottawa, Buffalo, Toronto, and then, yeah, that, that's it. The five teams you see there. It's just a matter of seeding. Technically, we could still work our way into a higher seed. We have a game at hand on Washington, so a win against Colorado here would be gigantic for us. And we get it, 5-4. to four. So we're now just two points back of the Capitals with three games left. The issue is we play the Islanders coming up. That is not an easy game. Esayokala hits 100 points, which is tremendous. And the Hawks, a very good team this year. Tough matchup, but we need to win it if we want to stay out of the bottom seed. We lose 5-2. to two. However, Columbus lost as well, so we are one point clear of them to be the second seed, or the, the top wildcard spot, I should say, the seventh seed. However, we're not going to catch Washington at this point. And actually, Columbus just played, so we need to win here. Columbus is a point ahead. We are four points back of Washington, so right now it's a two-horse race between us and the Blue Jackets to see who finishes seventh and eighth in the two wildcard spots, which, judging by the looks of it, Whoever finishes in 7th is going to have a much easier time because they get to go over to the Atlantic side of the bracket. So we cannot afford to screw ourselves over here. We have to win. We absolutely have to win. Staying in the Metro side of the bracket is death from the looks of it. So let's see what happens here against the top team in the East, the New York Islanders. They have a 2-1 lead, 2-2 in Hoseng. Koivula scores for us. They now have a 3-2 lead, Kravainen and Arvidsson. Quick sim of the third period, and that could be a sign of things to come because we could now very well be playing the Islanders in the playoffs in the first round, and I don't know if we're good enough to beat them. Our last game of the year is against Florida. We need to hope that the Blue Jackets drop points. If they don't, the pressure's on. The Blue Jackets play the same. No, they lost. They lost, thank God. If we beat the Florida Panthers, we go to the Atlantic side of the bracket. If we lose, we play the Islanders in round one. Fairly straightforward, this is a must-win game. Who would you rather take your chances with? One of those three teams or that? This is a must-win game. Florida, not even a playoff team. Dead last in the Atlantic. They might be dead last in the league. Are they? They are 26th in the league. The Pittsburgh Penguins suck. My God. <sighs> All right. This has to be a win. This has to be a win. No ifs, ands, or buts. Although, we should check our OW, which is actually what I originally went there for. In terms of our OW, they're ahead. It has to be a win. <sighs> It has to be a win. Let's see what happens. 
Let's see what happens. This might as well be a playoff game. Are we going to play the top team in the Atlantic? Or are we likely to get absolutely dunked on by the New York Islanders in round one? Let's find out. First period, two goals apiece. VJ and Delandria. Nornan and Jokinen. It is two all. Second period, it is four all. LeBanc and Barkov, Lambert, Ludman. Glad to know the goaltending showed showing up today. We go to the third. Power play chance for the Panthers is killed off. We need a win. And overtime point is not enough. It has to be both points if we want to avoid the Islanders. Can we do this the easy way? Or are we going to do this the hard way? As we have two minutes left in regulation. We're going to overtime. <sighs> Let's sim. Is it going to end in overtime? Not from the looks of it. Screw it. Let's watch to see what happens, shall we? Let's watch to see what happens. We will lock our position as the coach so I can at least skip replays. And we'll go to it. Again, remember, no icings, no offsides. This is a must-win moment for this team. Literally, there is no choice. We have to win desperately. Or we have to play the Islanders, which is a very, very dire situation. No offsides, no icings, three-on-three three overtime. Does it get any better than that? I do not know. Chance here potentially as Delandria fights for it. Walks it over the blue line. Just sends it around the dump and chase. Could come back to haunt them. Here's Saren Haimo. The midseason call up. He's trudging along. Saren Haimo. Back for Vertan and takes the shot rather than the pass. Stopped down by their goalkeeper. Here's Zach Vlad. The dish to Martinet. And can we get to him? He's trudging along. Dishes back to Landria. Big save there. By Loxo, but another chance here for Florida. Short side doesn't go. And Loxo will cover it. 121 remaining in overtime. Again, we have one point secured, but as it stands, the Blue Jackets are ahead on tiebreaker. Niemi and Barkov, Ludman and Lambert, all finished forwards out there. Here's Zach Blad, though. Aaron Niemi just wide of the post. Lambert recovers. Here's Thomas Hikola. The former Panther. Hikola dishes to Ludman. Stops. Recovered though. Ludman now for Hikola again. And back. Ludman tries to go five hole again. But Lindbaum is there. A couple of chances for Tommy Ludman. But Oscar Lindbaum was up to the challenge. Would have been nice. We'll stick with the top units. Miami Barkov, Ludman, and Lambert out there. Let's see what happens. We've lost our last two games. Here's Hikola. Gets bumped off by Aaron Niemi. Now Sasha Barkov, the captain, dishes back for Niemi. Hero Niemi. Looking slap shot. Blocked down in front. Puck recovered by Hikola. Played into the boards by Barkov. Loose puck kicked out. Ludman has it. Now Hikola. 43 seconds left. Are we going to the shootout? Thomas Hikola steps in. Lambert now back again. Hikala doesn't shoot. What are you doing? They went for a line change and Hikala didn't shoot. Unbelievable. Here's Ty to Landria. Over the blue line. Couple of line changes. Jonathan Huberdo can't get the shot off. Thomas Hikala in the corner again. We'll try to get that line change out. Here's Yokola. It's hit on the half wall. Ekblad for Huberdo. Eight seconds left. One last rush for the Panthers. Delandria. Looking. Makes a move. Tries to go back to Huberdo, who cannot get the shot off. And we go to a shootout. Will it be the Islanders? Or will it be the top team in the Atlantic? Let's find out. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Huberdeau's top of the order. First up. We need a big performance from Loxo. And he makes the save there. A non-move from Huberdeau. Loxo 
Did not move. Here comes Brad Lambert for the Finns. Can't beat Lindbaum on the backhand. A decent attempt. Here comes Hiro Niemi, the Finn. Can't get Loxo on the backhand. A good move with the head fake. Wasn't enough. Chance here now. It's Tommy Ludman. Can't beat Lindbaum. And a big opportunity here now for Florida. Lindbaum with the save. That brings up Ty Delandria. Makes the move. Backhand is denied. Huge save from Locke, though I honestly thought that was going in. And a chance to win the game. Right here, right now. It's Vertanen. Stepping in. Tries to go between the legs. It gets poked off and we're going to sudden death. Bonus rounds here in the shootout. Another single goal thus far. It will be Sasha Barkov, the captain of the Panthers, stepping in. Cannot beat Loxo. Tried to go five hole. And now another chance to win it for the Finns. Who will it be? Don't know. Who's number 79? It's Kervinen, the defenseman. Stepping in. Shoots it wide of the blocker side post. Chance for Florida to take the lead. It's Kevin LeBanc. And he snipes it, even though the in arena announcer says Kevin LeBanc. Kevin LeBanc. With the snipe, we must score. Or we will be facing the New York Islanders in round one. And that's an upset that I don't know we can pull off. Kevin LeBanc. It's on the stick of Yokola. Our leading scorer, Yokola, tries to go five hole and cannot succeed. We lose our last three games of the season. And with that, we will be playing the New York Islanders in the first round. If I seem disappointed, it's because I am. Because on paper, we're going to have a very difficult time. This team struggled. A little bit more at times than I would have thought. We had a great run leading up to the trade deadline to get us into a playoff spot. But ultimately, we finish as the 8th seed, which is just not good enough. It simply isn't. Incredibly disappointing. Now, from a point standpoint, for lack of a better term, that top line was tremendous, obviously. The second line... Tremendous. I mean, Kapanen, Norinen, for Samuel Louis to hit 50 points, but I believe without power play time, I think Asplund has it instead. That's tremendous. No real complaints. Piernez hit 30. I love the forward core right now. Kipper had 20, but again, the defense was a concern. Lamala had 18. Borgstrom is 17. Koivula with 11. So the fourth line struggled a little bit down the stretch. Defensively, I'm happy with that. Two 30 point defensemen. Currently no minuses on the defensive side of things. I think that's the version of the team that we take into the playoffs. And goaltending-wise, I don't think Yuka Lakso would exactly be Vesna caliber. And, of course, Hakarainen struggled, so we know that is going to be the guy. Had to make a quick jump cut there, but it's all well and good. Quickly, before we wrap up this episode, let's take a look at the stats around the league. No, Gundler actually led the way. 119 points for Chicago. You have Taylor Hall in New Jersey. Jack Hughes also in Chicago. So that would explain that, as is Dylan Genther. So that's their top line. Kirby Dock working well with Taylor Hall. And then you have the likes of Yokola, Pedersen, Mats Bergfist in New Jersey, and Brad Lambert all hitting at least 100 points. The top goal score is probably Hughes. It is 61 goals. You're in the Emmy with 56. He had uh, six 50 goal guys this year. It's not too bad. From a defensive standpoint, Quinn Hughes, 70 points. That's depressing, and that's flat out been what we've been missing throughout this series is a top-notch defenseman such as that. Excuse me. The goaltenders. Lamb is probably the winningest in the aisle. Yes, he is. 70 or 70 games, 45 wins. Top save percentage. No glitch save percentage this year, but uh, Uko Pekalukinen's going to win a Vesna. So that's, 
That's great. That's just wonderful, isn't it? The Calder is going to go to Donovan Beach of the San Jose Sharks. Unless there's a mythical, magical goaltender, in which I don't think there is. Gonchar with that 9-12. That is not going to be enough. So with that, that brings the regular season to a close. Let's get the confirmation of this horrible fate that awaits us, because we already know what it's going to be. While I have confidence in this team, while we've had some good moments this season, uh, because of our struggles, we're up against it. We get to take on the New York Islanders in round one, the team that just beat us 4-3. to three. Granted, we ran our backup goalie. It is not going to be an easy challenge. We are, we are we're back where we want to be. We're in the postseason. Anything can happen. And for my sanity, let's hope that something good happens. That we win. What a novel concept that would be.